When you work on your literature review, there are three types of sources that you're interested in, three types of sources of information, and sometimes these are called general sources, secondary sources, and primary sources. You start with the general sources to get uh, your ideas about a topic, and then you look at the secondary sources to get an overview of the topic, and then you study the primary sources to master your subject. They go on increasing levels of, of difficulty. So the general sources, that, that provides an overview of the topic in an easy to read uh, way. For example, Wikipedia is a, a, a general source, especially the first paragraph or two of an article will give you a general overview of the article so that you can situate yourself and kind of make sense out of what's being talked about. Textbooks are also a really good general source of information. They're especially useful because they're designed for students who want to learn, and they provide tons of references for secondary and primary sources. So for example, if you're studying uh, uh, organizational psychology, you might have a textbook like Work in the 21st Century, and there's 600 pages covering general topics in organizational psychology. Now, it's interesting, this, this textbook is going to be pretty similar to all other textbooks on organizational psychology. The, the educational system in the U.S. makes it pretty standardized what gets, copy, what gets covered in different types of uh, textbooks. So it doesn't really matter what textbook you use, and textbooks also have this habit of having like a new edition every three years ago. Um, so that Students don't buy used uh, editions much cheaper. That's kind of a scam. Things are not going to change very much between the 7th edition and the 8th edition. Some editors change the orders of chapters, but that's the most major thing that's going to uh, uh, change. You can almost always buy a textbook that's uh, uh, a couple editions older and not lose much information. So textbooks are a great general source of information. And often when I'm studying a new topic, that's what I'll go to. I'll go to a textbook that has a couple pages on a topic, see what the main references are, and go to those uh, uh, references. Uh, newspapers are an example of a general source. That can That's something that can get you interested in a topic, um, blogs, uh, 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 news sites. And so just in general, most web pages count as general sources. Now, these general sources you're not necessarily going to cite in your lit review, but they help you get started and help you determine what you want to focus on. The secondary sources provide a scholarly analysis or a summary of relevant research done on the topic. Now, my field is social psychology and organizational psychology. And um, in the field of psychology, we have lots of books that are called handbooks. Here's the Handbook of Principles of Organizational Behavior. Handbooks are high quality summary. Uh, 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 each, each chapter is a summary of some major topic, given, providing a review of the topic, everything that we know about it. So handbooks are a, a, a really good secondary source providing an overview of uh, a topic. Um, in terms of journal articles, there's review articles that do like um, handbook chapters, but maybe covering just the last 20 years. And then there's meta-analyses that take all the quantitative research and combine the quantitative research together to see what trends uh, emerge. Um, so probably handbooks, meta-analyses, and review articles, those are three standard types of secondary sources. But also books summarizing a researcher's re research program can be really good. For example, here is Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow. Daniel Kahneman, he's a, a psychologist who won a Nobel Prize. And this is a kind of a summary of his research on how, how ha people have two different types of two different systems of thinking, the quick emotional system and the uh, slower, more rational system. And I can 
say with 100% certainty that reading this book e is a lot easier than reading his journal articles. It was, it was, he wrote this um, not to provide all the quantitative details, but to provide an, an agreeable overview. And it turned into a best-selling uh, uh, book because it was so interesting to read. Harvard Business Review is also a good source of uh, summaries of researchers' uh, 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 topic. And then there's the primary sources. And primary sources should be the main component of your uh, literature review. This provides the original evidence of the ideas relevant to the topic. And so this would be peer-reviewed empirical articles where they actually go out and measure and conduct studies or peer-reviewed theoretical articles where they take summaries of uh, studies and put them together in theories, putting them all together. So those are the three types of sources for your literature review. Now I want to encourage you to always keep very organized notes when you are conducting a uh, literature review. Um, for example, some people like annotated uh, biblio uh, uh, bibliography. Ooh, that's a typo. I wrote biography here. It should be bibliography. Um, uh, and annotated bibliography is a short summary of an article. Um, or I personally don't like doing that. I like writing an outline of the uh, articles. I go through it. Sometimes typically between one and two pages outlining the key ideas when I uh, go through a journal article. Um, and don't wait till the end of your research to collect all your references for your reference page. Keep it going, keep track of those references, um, copy and paste them from Google Scholar and then adapt to them so that they're complete in case there's things that are missing. Um, I use software called EndNote. There's a number of different software systems that uh, manage your references. I have about uh, over the years, I've collected about 2,000 references, and all I have to do is uh, put in Eisenberger and look for all the articles on Eisenberger, and I see, oh, that 1986 one is the one that I want, and um, choose that one, and it puts the in-text reference and the text on the reference pages. So EndNote is some, is some excellent software, but it takes a long time to learn how to uh, manage it. So um, it's mainly professional uh, researchers and PhD students who use uh, the, the software. All right, now let's look at how the literature review relates to hypothesis formation. We tend to think uh, of the relationship between the research question, the hypothesis, and the literature review kind of going in a linear way, but it doesn't really. We tend to think, okay, we start with a research question. We come up with some hypothesis that might uh, respond to the research question. And then we do a literature review. Well, that, that's too linear. It doesn't work. Your literature review will inform your research question and your hypothesis. So, so it's much more like this, where you've got a research question, you've got that goes leads to a tentative hypothesis, which goes to the literature review. But you start reading about it and reading, realizing you weren't reading, you weren't asking the right question, so you change your question, which changes your hypothesis. But then you read more, and then you make a different hypothesis, and it all interacts, and it doesn't go real smoothly because you never know when new information is going to change something else. But it's messy, and that's how life is, and we just have to uh, uh, live with it. Um, and so, but but when all is is done, and you've done your literature review, you've you've read everything, you figured out your research question, you've uh, done your hypothesis, you're basically going to end up with a uh, an essay for your literature review leading up to your hypothesis. So, for example, the structure might be an important question is, how does A relate to B? And then you say, we know this about A. We know this about B. Therefore, we hypothesize that A and B are related in such and such a way. So that's kind of the structure that your lit review will have. We'll have the research question. 
that identifies the main variables. We'll talk about what we know about the main variables, and then we'll make an argument that those variables are re related in such and such a way, and that will be our hypothesis.